My name's Doug Poole. I live on Lopez here. I grew up on Lopez, actually, and then was in California for a number of years. Came back to raise my family, so I'm back in the islands doing this, raising my family and my business. I started Sage Building Solutions about eight years ago, nine years ago now. As a builder, I was looking for a way to be, sort of find myself in a green building place, right? A way to actually build more responsibly rather than just doing big remodels in Carmel, California that, are, that weren't really connecting with me. Um, and so I found this home performance model. And so what home performance is, it's just basically looking at how a building is operating. But Sage, my company, does a lot of different things that pertain to green building. I also do a lot of assessments on houses, so I talk to a lot of people about their house, their situation. And so we thought it would be a good idea to come up and kind of do that here. Even though I can't see your house, we're going to be looking at some houses today. We're in a building. We can all imagine our houses and we can get over some fundamental points of, of green houses. Like what is a green building? What are we doing here? You know, I, I sort of live for a day when, it, when that doesn't even exist, just that all buildings are green buildings, right? I mean, that's kind of what I want to do. And that's happening. The, the codes have gotten tighter and tighter and walls are getting thicker and, you know, heating systems more efficient and so on to the point where now, the, especially in Washington State, the codes are really driving a lot of this, so it's great. And it doesn't have to be a lot more expensive, which is what's nice. So with that, I'll just start with the kind of the fundamentals of a house and kind of break it out. So we'll start by drawing, there's a house. Houses are boxes that we live in, right? And so we like, we're really finicky humans, you know, we're not like, you know, the animals that don't need boxes around us where we want climate control and we want a roof over our head. We want it to be dry, right? All these things. So the goal with, with green building, if you will, or home performance is another way of looking at it, is getting the house to be climate controlled so it's comfort, right? So that's one of the main things we're looking at is comfort. And then of course efficiency, right? We're all here to save the planet or something. And um, we want it to be durable and healthy. So we want to have healthy air in there for us to live, live with. We, want, we don't want mold. We don't want, you know, critters in the crawl space, that kind of thing. Okay. So here's our box. We're going to give this house an attic. Okay. And we'll give it a crawl space too. So that's a house, right? We, we all get the idea. Okay. So we're inside here and we want it to be, you know, we'll just use 70 degrees. Okay. And one of the first things I like to talk about with people is a house, the building shell is designed of, it's, it's got two elements in it. This stuff, right? This is brown, but you maybe have seen it in pink or yellow and it makes you itch. Okay, this stuff actually doesn't itch. Um, but it's fiberglass insulation. What insulation does is air is, you know, the 70 degrees is on this side of it and the 30 degrees is on this side of it, right? Outside. And so it just, there's lots of air capsules in there. There's lots of little air spaces. And so it has to, the, the heat has to go through into one air space and then go into the next air space and then make its way into another air space, right? So it just slows it down. It will eventually make its way through, but it's, it just slows that heat loss, that, that conductive loss. So when you add heat in here, it keeps the heat in the house a lot longer. That's an R, so we, we all know insulation is R value, right? That's, that R is resistance. It's resistance to heat loss, okay? So insulation, so we have insulation and then we have air sealing. And we're gonna get to that in a second, but first we're gonna define where the insulation is in this house, right? We're, we're gonna make the assumption that it's in the walls. So we have insulation, we're gonna put some up in the attic. So we have a cold attic, it's not a conditioned attic, it's a cold attic. And we'll put some in the floor. So what makes a, green, a greener structure is thicker walls. It makes more of this. The more of this, the slower the heat loss, the better you're going to be able to retain the heat. Okay? 
So that's one of the main things is thickening walls and there's no way to get around it, it's thicker. Then there's air sealing and with air sealing, there's two factors. One, the main one is we're at 70 degrees in here. What happens is air, warm air rises, right? So air, the particles get excited and they run away from each other and they get lighter and they go and it puts a positive pressure system up high in the building, right? Because the warm air is wanting to get up there, so it's buoyant, which creates a negative pressure down low in the building. And positive always goes to negative, right? High pressure always goes to low pressure. And so what you end up with is if you put your you know, bathroom vanity here or whatever and you drill through the wall and into the floor and so on with your plumbing, you get an air leak right there. That cold air, that drafty air is coming from a crawl space, which is not ideal. And then it's, you know, you got your can light up here, you know, lighting can that has leakage around it and so on. And then you lose that heat up high. So air is coming in low and out up high. We call that the, st the stack effect. Like, cause it's a smokestack. It's kind of like the smokestack in, in your house. Is. So stack effect is something that any, in any building you can really try and combat. That's the number one thing is to start to try and seal the, seal the house high and seal it low.